Hey guys and welcome to my video on how to improve your performance and frames per second in the popular mod for Armour 2, uh, DayZ. Uh, as you may know or may not know, I'm a DayZ streamer, a live streamer on Twitch TV and got loads of DayZ videos on my YouTube account. Um, but I'm just going to give you guys a couple of tips uh, on how to improve your frame rate in the game as uh, sometimes it can be unplayable. So let's have a look and let's start out now. Right then guys, step one and possibly the easiest step that you can take. Um, this is to select a server that is near to you. Um, if we go into our um, if we go into Daisy Commander, you will see on the right hand side next to the server lists, you will see a loads of numbers. Um, MS is your connection to the server. The lower the better. If you're connected to a server in America and you are in England you're going to get bad MS. It's going to be poor because you're going all the way from where you are over loads of water over to a server which is on the other side of the world. Make sure you're connecting to a server that is close to you and you can normally tell that by how low the MS. Lower the MS, the better connection to the server and the better frame rate. Well, not better frame rate, but just better connection to the server and better in-game play you're going to have. Rather than you shooting and someone running away because you've shot and they're three seconds in ahead of you, Getting that MS quite low, I'd say below 50 is always a good start, um, is one thing you should do, which will really help out your in-game settings. So, yep, yeah, change your server you're playing on to one that's closer to you, and you're going to have a good time, guys. Okay, so tip number two. This isn't really my tip. This is another Daisy live streamer. You may know him as Oshi7, um, but you wouldn't know him as Oshi7. Uh, he's another great Daisy streamer, and he has put a video online of how to install Daisy to your RAM disk or your RAM, which makes it run really, really quick, even faster than any SSD you can possibly imagine. It's only a 300 meg file, Daisy. So if you write that to your RAM disk in the video guide that I'm putting on top of my display now, click on that. Check out how to install Daisy to your RAM disk. It'll give you definitely an extra edge when trying to get more frames a second, because. It's just a really great way of running your game off something that's faster than an SSD and it will really help out in games. So make sure you check that out. Number three, uh, another obviously one, CPU and graphics card and your setup. You're going to have to have a decent setup for Armour 2 or DayZ. Um, if you've got uh, an Intel processor, I recommend an, a quad core. Definitely one of the first gen, maybe the 9 series i7s and above. Or an i5 uh, 9 series and above. Definitely quad core from the Intel side and the AMD side. If you can squeeze out some extra performance with some overclocks, do it guys. If you can get that CPU over 3.5 GHz, you'll really notice the difference in game. I've got mine currently set off uh, 4 GHz. It's an i7 870. Not the best CPU you can get, of course. But obviously they cost money, CPUs, don't we know, right? Um, so if you can get your CPU overclocked, you're going to notice extra frames, guys. It's a very, very CPU intensive game. Daisy and Armour. So get those overclocks going on. You can definitely search Google for your motherboard and CPU combination and find out what you can boost it to with your caller that you've got as well. Uh, definitely a good website to check out is overclock.net. It's a great forum. Sign up there, ask away on there. I've been on there for years. All the guys are really friendly and helpful, and they'll be able to help you out uh, if you ask questions about overclocking your PC without it damaging your components with heat but yeah you're going to get an extra boost by having an overclock CPU and GPU of course this game isn't as GPU intensive as your other ones I could have an i7 um, 4770k at, at 5 gigahertz next to someone else who's got a 4770k at 5 gigahertz he's got a Titan I've got my 680 we're not going to notice that much difference this is very CPU intensive guys get those overclocks going on and you'll notice a difference cool so tip number four is just your in-game video settings so um, these are up to debate for some people but this is what I like to play and record at in 1080p and also stream at 720p so not only it looks really good it also plays really nice as well okay so let's check them out I'll put below in the description my settings guys so you can see exactly what I'm running and you can see if your um, options are um, close to mine in regards to your video settings. So uh, let's start out with our video settings. I've got visibility set to 1600. There's no sniper in this game I don't think that can hit over 1000 to 1200 really. So 1600 is great. You're going to be able to see your distance, people running far away in the distance. If the server is foggy, obviously not. But if it's averagely clear, like this Epoch server I'm playing on, you can see it's going to be um, quite decent to see into the distances here as well. Brightness, I always have it on full. Some people have it on medium, as you can see there, but I prefer it on full. 
gamma midway. I always have my gamma mid. Quality preference very high. That will change your default settings, but I just set it to very high and then customize them in the advanced menu here. Interface and 3D, have them both the same. The interface with your sight and sound, uh, your blood and all your stuff and your uh, food and drink on the side here. I like that looking nice and clean and tidy. So having that set to the same resolution as your interface and 3D is going to make you uh, have a good time. Or oh, it's going to look better for your videos and also on your stream if you are a streamer. Cool, so let's go into our advanced settings. We have uh, obviously the same stuff at the top here. Texture detail. Have it set to very high. My car can handle very high. It makes your textures look a bit more less blocky. Video memory. Some people debate about this. I have it at very high. Default, it will only use what it thinks it needs. If you put it to very high, it's always going to use the maximum amount that it is. So yeah, set that to very high. And let's drop your filtering. I like it very high. Again, if you've got a lower end card, uh, maybe a 660 below below that, um, I'd recommend um, putting it on normal, but I like it very high. The 680 is beefy enough to handle the, the filtering. Analyzing. So, uh, again, another one for debate. This makes things that are further away from you look better. So, for example, if I put it to uh, normal, um, uh, put it to 8, it's going to make the buildings that are around me look sharper. It's also going to massively affect your frame rate. Mine's just dropped down to 17. But you can see there the house looks a lot sharper. And things in the distance look a lot better. If I put it down to normal, they're still going to look sharp, but they're not going to look as sharp. So, I mean, I have mine set to normal. You see it looks not smooth, but it still looks good. So I'm going to keep mine at normal because it, it's good for your videos and your streams. Uh, obviously, it does affect things like, you see this top of this building here is very, very jagged. The more you put that up, it's going to smoothen that out a little bit. But I find normal is a good balance for gameplay and for frames a second. And for your streams and YouTube vids. Terrain detail, objects detail, shadow detail. I have these all set to normal. Another big debate. Your hardcore DayZ players are going to say, have them all on full. It makes the game harder. Because what terrain detail does is it adds more bushes and more terrain around the areas where you've got bushes and terrain so it gives people more opportunity to camp out in those regions so for example let's say I have um, this is just an example over there you see here we've got a bush add more terrain detail you're gonna have more terrain detail around this bush so if there's a guy camping in there if I have it on low I'm gonna see him because there's not that much detail in there but if I have it on high, it's going to cover them up a little bit more. Big subject to debate. I have it on normal. That's not the right option there. I have it on normal. Other people might disagree. But I found it's a good medium to play the game with for frames a second. And also for um, also for playing the game. Okay. Um, now, so HDR quality. I have it set to normal. Again, I find it better. Post process effects. I definitely disable these. If I put it on very high, you'll see what happens. I get this random aura of buzz and echo of fuzz just off the top of things. You can see as I remove that, it makes it look a lot cleaner. That's something I've seen a lot in standalone at the moment, like the buzz, the sort of the 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 post process effect, which can look cool when I'm recording and playing. I want it disabled because it looks better. That's my opinion, but I find it runs better in the game as well. Interface size small. This is um, your interface here again. Having it small, I think it looks better. Very large. That just looks pony. You can't even see anything. Small. You can see this here. It moves it over a little bit. Not really interested in that. Normal makes it even bigger. Very small. Uh, not great. Okay, guys. So I have it there. Uh, aspect ratio. Please set that. See, very small. Rubbish. Um... I have my aspect ratio set to 16 by 9 that's to do your monitor, 16 by 9 works good for me. If you are capable, which I very doubt you are, of getting over 60 frames a second in your big cities, um, then um, definitely have VSync enabled, or if you've got a 120 hertz monitor of course put it to 100, it'll be 120. I have it disabled because I don't think you're ever going to be able to get over that when you're running through your main cities. Right, that's my video settings guys. Um, thanks very much for that bit. Let's go on to the next one. Last but not least, just a general tip over for you. If I click on the map here, I'm just going to let you know, guys, expect to experience bad FPS in number one, Chernogorsk here. A lot of buildings, a lot of players, a lot of zombies. There. 
Expect to get 20 to 25 frames a second. I'm getting 20 at the moment in Electro. So there you go. Chernogorsk. Electro. Berezino. Starry Sabor. Northwest Airfield. Northeast Airfield. Those are places that you, I can expect you to get a FPS drop. There is nothing you can do about it. That is the game. There is more buildings. There's more things to do there. I definitely recommend to uh, do all the tips I've given you to try and get better. But in those areas, uh, especially here where I am in uh, Electro, where there's going to be a lot of buildings and a lot of things, a lot of cars, vehicles, zombies, you're going to get bad FPS. There's nothing you can do about it. I say bad, it's going to be around 20. If you're running from, say, Cherno to Electro, you can get 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 25, 26, 27, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, Thanks very much guys for watching the video. I hope it's helped you out in some way, shape or form to get better frames a second in Daisy. Have a better experience of recording and also streaming if you are a streamer. Follow the tips. Hope they'll work out for you. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you all very, very soon.